Hi everybody and welcome to Promote Hope. I am your host Ivory Johnson and I will be coming before you with topics, ideas, and interviews on things that maybe we are kind of discouraged about or we don't know how to or fear has taken its course and we don't know the next step on what to do next with whatever God has called us to do. So my job is to talk to you guys and promote love, hope, and laughs and hoping that when you are done listening to this, you will feel like you can do anything or you your faith will be ignited and you will jump back on a bandwagon and say, you know, I'm ready. I'm going to do this. I feel encouraged. My goal is to encourage you to be the best you that you could be and the best you that you have always dreamed. And sometimes we, I feel like fear keeps us from doing the things that God has called us to do or those desires and those little things that dreams we have. Sometimes fear can kind of separate us from really going forth with the things that, you know, we feel like we should be doing. So let's get to it. The first thing, before I share the topic, every time I come on and talk, I want to ask a question. So my question to you guys today is, are you ready for the things that you are praying for? Are you really ready to receive what it is that you're asking God to do? I just want you to take a moment to really think, is my prayers scripted? Am I just saying what I think? Am I just saying what somebody else thinks? Or do I really feel like God is wanting to do something in my life? And do I feel like my prayers are going to be answered? Do I feel like I'm asking the right prayers? Or is your prayers, your dreams and desires like... Think about what you're praying and then think about, hmm, am I ready for that? Am I ready to be a millionaire? Am I ready to have a nine bedroom, seven bathroom home? Am I ready to have this car that costs thousands and thousands of dollars that I don't even know how to put oil in? Am I really ready for the things that I'm asking God for? So just take a minute to think the ministry that you're asking God for, the time, the tools, whatever you're asking God for, are you really ready to receive that? So just take a minute to think about that as I prepare our lesson. So the reason I ask that question is because one thing that I have learned is that when I ask God for something and he gives it to me, it always comes with extra stuff. So, you know, you think you're ready for something. You're like, God, I want to have this. God, I need this. God, I want more money. God, I want more, 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 more. Then he gives it to you and you miss the whole fact that it comes with a cost. It comes with a price. It comes with something attached to it. You know, it comes with something that you weren't prepared for. So I have learned that in my prayers, write down the things that I'm praying for and also start preparing to receive. A lot of times we don't prepare to receive. Like one thing that I pray for is to become a mom. And I wanted children, I wanted to have babies, but I didn't know what all that came with. You know, a lot of times we get on social media and we see, oh my gosh, it looks so great. Motherhood is amazing. I just want to be a mom until you become one and you're like, what? Or motherhood ain't working for me. Or this isn't what I was asking for. This isn't what I wanted. <laughs> so, these kids is crazy. Crying, losing sleep, irritable, postpartum depression, things that you don't know that are attached to what you are asking God for. So I just want to start off by just encouraging you to prepare for what you're praying for. Practice for what you're praying for. We're going to talk a little bit about that in 
the learning today but i just want you guys to just when you're praying be intentional okay god i want this 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 okay well are you preparing and are you ready for this 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 when god gives it to you do you have a do you have space for this this and this or this and that you know do you have a place to put a million dollars do you have a place to put do you have compartments are you prepared are you ready to receive what god what you're asking god for so let's get into the topic of today. The topic of today is starter kit, becoming a starter. So we talked about the dreams, the desires, and things that are in your heart that you've always wanted to do. Stuff that I believe that God puts into your heart because he wants you to have those things and he wants, you, he wants to give those things to you. However, where do you start? Where do you begin? And I would, I used to get on YouTube to look up how to do stuff, but even before you research, where do you start in doing the things that you feel that God has called you to do? So for an example, writing a book, where do you start? God told you you were going to write a song. Where do you start? God told you you was going to be a parent. Where do you start? God told you that you were going to be a wife. Where do you start? God told you you were going to be a cook. Where do you start? God told you you were going to be a pastor. Where do you start? Like, where do you begin when the prophet speaks into your life? When somebody speaks over you? When God gives you these dreams and visions? When stuff is being poured into your heart? Where do you even start? Like, after you get up off your face from at the altar and you got this great word and you leave church where do you where do you begin what do you do from um that moment on so i have come up with some things that i wanted to share with you guys as to just becoming a starter some steps some tools that i have used to become get past just starting something a lot of times again fear has kept me from starting something. So say, let's just use exercising for an example. Okay, I want to exercise. I want a certain body. I want a certain look. Okay, where do I start? Before I even start, where do I begin? Before I get the body and I'm either starting to work out, it starts in my mind. So it all starts in your mind. Where are you at in your mind? What do you need to do before? So, little story, me and my husband are trying to get a house. So, we're talking to the people. We're like, okay, we have this day. We're doing this. We're doing this. She said, before anything, you have to have good credit before you can even start looking. Don't even start looking until your credit is right. And I was just thinking about that like, before you even go to the gym, buy a house, do the big thing, there's something you need to do first, and that is just make up in your mind. So step one is just make it up in your mind. You need to have your mind made up that this is what I'm going to do. This is what I want. This is who I am. This is what God has called in me to be. Believing in your mind. So first things first is it's got to get in your mind. It's got to get in your spirit. So in your mind, you need to each day replay in your mind. I want to do this. Pour into yourself. I want to do that. I want to own a home. I want to write a book. I want to become a wife. I want to be a mom. Before you do the thing, let's just make up in our mind that this is even what we want to do. So it all starts with renewing, refreshing, and pouring into your mind. This is what I want. So step two would be buy a notebook. I have tons and tons and tons of notebooks. Because your notebook, this is your guide as to writing down the things that you've made up in your mind. 
So once it's in your mind, now you need to transfer what's in your mind to paper. So write down your dreams, your visions, how you see it, what you think, how you feel about it. I'm anxious to be a wife. I'm nervous to be a mom. I believe I am going to pass my master and get my master's degree write down on a piece of paper and it even says in the bible write down the vision and make it plain so transfer what's in your mind that you have made up in your mind onto paper and write it down and make sure that you leave this is between you and your this is you and yourself so whatever you think that maybe somebody might see, maybe it might be funny right now, maybe it doesn't sound right, write it down on paper. You trust you is between you. You don't have to share with anybody right now. Just write it down on paper what you've always dreamed and wanted to do. Sometimes I'll be in the shower and God will just be like, Boom, boom, porn, vision. Oh, do this, do that. Okay, I'll see myself doing this. I'll see myself doing that. I'll see. And then if I don't write it down, I might forget. I might miss it. I might miss the opportunity that I could have had to research and figure it out. Like when the prophet speaks, I heard a sermon and he said, when a prophet speaks, it's supposed to lead you into a faith journey. It's supposed to steer you into the way that you're supposed to go and what you're supposed to be preparing for. So when somebody speaks over you and shares something with you, you're supposed to be preparing for that thing until it comes to pass. So I would first encourage mind notebook. Then the next step is to research and read. So a lot of times we don't like to read, we don't want to research, we don't want to figure it out, we just want to take the easy route and just get right to it. I just want to hurry up and get, I just want to hurry, I just want to hurry, okay, whatever, okay, I'll sign the papers. Before you read, you'll just sign the papers because I agree, it's so funny, like when I'm on, um, when I'm trying to download something, it'll say, do you agree to these terms and conditions? I mean like pages and pages, scrolls and scrolls, I ain't reading that. Yes, I agree to these terms and conditions, and I like it. I just click yes, don't read, and keep it moving. Don't know what I signed up for, don't know what I signed myself over. I remember, um, I just got hit with fraud, and somebody got all my account information, and yeah, it happened to me because I didn't read. I wasn't paying attention to, I wasn't paying attention to the detail, the fine print. I didn't know one thing about the next thing and next thing I know there's fraud on my account and somebody was able to get over on me. So researching and reading those things that you feel that God is leading you to do. So for me, I want to open my own school one day. I want to have this magnificent school for ages six weeks to 11 years old and it's in my head. I have the vision. It's written down, but I don't know the first step. I don't know the first place to write in a business plan, to getting funding, to, I, I don't even, am I supposed to like build it from the ground, buy it? Is God just going, is, is it going to just magically appear? No, I have to research and read. I have to educate myself on how to make a quality and successful business plan. I have to, now, I do believe that God will, if that is what God is calling you to have, if that's God, what God is calling you to do, I do believe that he will lead you, but there are some things you have to read. There are some things you're going to have to research. You're not just going to know everything about your desire. You're going to have to research. So if marriage is the thing, you may need to read and research about marriage. You may need to, there's books, Kingdom Marriage, Kingdom Woman. There's all types of books out there. Relationship goals, Mike Todd is coming out with about relationships and healing. And so before you just, okay, I pick him, I'm marrying him and life is going to be like I thought it was, <laughs> you know, before you do that, you might need to research, you and your partner need to talk about and really research what is marriage. What is the intended, you know, purpose or else you're going to get into that thing and realize, oops, this ain't what I thought it was going to be. So reading and researching would be um, another step to starting, to beginning. 
um, what God has called you to do. Number four is build a team. So you need one to two people that is not a hater, is a believer, is an encourager, is going to hold you accountable to what you want to do. Someone who you feel you can trust to share your vision. Someone you feel who's going to uplift your arms when you can't uplift your arms. A partner who feels like, who you feel like when I am struggling, I can call this person and they're going to say, okay, sis, okay, bro, you struggling right now. I get that. But remember what God said. Someone you can share your deepest, darkest hardships with. Someone who you believe will be there when it's hard and when it's great. It could be a parent, a sibling, a best friend. You know, and if you don't have that person, ask God to send someone. Ask God to send someone in your life, in your path, who you believe will support you and be there for you. Now, I will share this information. Not every team can go for every vision so you may have a group of people who will be there supportive in your exercise but they may not be the same support in your motherhood you may have a group of moms who are there for your mother group but maybe not there for your marriage group you may have marriage group who are there for that and may not be there for your business so it's not you can't really say it's one person for every single vision you have. But ask God, whatever the one that you're working on in the moment, ask God to send you somebody that will hold you accountable. You know, my husband is holding me accountable with this whole exercise thing. I asked God and I thought it was going to be somebody, you know, on the outside. But it's actually my husband who's being very supportive about me wanting to lose weight in my health journey. So everybody is not going to fit in every single journey, portion of your journey, but just still ask God to have some people that will root for you with, with the dreams and desires that you are trying to accomplish. Get with people who maybe are trying to accomplish the same thing, have like desires, or have already accomplished. Try not to find people that, you know, it's just going to bring you down or just be really negative when you're trying to get through or share about something that you may be struggling with or, you know, that maybe they want. Sometimes people want what you are trying to, maybe they don't have the confidence to push through and start something that you're trying to start. So just be very selective and ask God to send you someone who will support you and love you through whatever it is that you're trying to get through and we'll celebrate you my cup says celebrate small victories find somebody who is willing to celebrate those small victories like yes yes girl we got the grant yes girl you did that yes girl you finished yes girl yes girl yes bro yes yes you finished like find somebody who's going to root you on because it's gonna make starting so much easier so number five is pouring into yourself. So self-care, we know we love self-care. We love to get our nails done. We love to get our toes done. We love to get our hair done. We love to get our hair cut. We love to do all of this stuff for ourselves. However, that's on the outside. So I'm talking about the things that you're eating, your health, what you're drinking, what you're putting on the inside. You want to make sure that you're taking care of the inside of you because when you take care of the inside, the outside flourishes. And so you don't want to be weary and tired. You want to run this race. You want to do this thing. You want to really push it out and really make it to the end. And we're not even at the end yet. We're just pushing to start. We're just pushing to believe. We're just pushing to get excited about what God has called us to do. And the inside of you has to feel good. You have to feel good about yourself. Put, listening to other people's podcasts, listening to other people's sermons, listening to other people sharing, you know, reaching out to your people, reaching out to people that you love, 
put laughing, you know, we watch comedy, we watch things that is gonna make us laugh, just on the inside, filling that inside up because when your inside is filled up also, you can also pour out. And so it can get tiring and exhausting trying to start. It's tiring and exhausting and, and, the, and it takes steps. So you could just be at step one with the mind, it's exhausting. Just, just thinking about some things and thinking through some things can be exhausting. So you wanna make sure that the inside of you is feeling really good so that you can pour out and it can show on the outside. So pouring into yourself is my number five. Number six is sowing seeds into other people's ministry and into other people. You don't want to just be a taker. When you're ready to get started, you want to also reach out and see other people that, like I said, have gone before you or who are trying to do something too. Pour into those people and sow seeds into those people too. If you see a church trying to start off from the ground, if you see somebody trying to start their vision, if you see somebody starting, trying to start their dream, don't just overlook them. Pour into them as well. A lot of times we want to just receive and get all the pouring into but don't want to pour into anyone else so i would just share that pour pl planting seeds giving your offering giving here giving there when you see somewhere that says hey trying to open up a new daycare center need toys and you have a whole bunch of toys in your garage you know clean that stuff off and give it to somebody be willing to give and be willing to love other people while you're on your journey trying to start and it feels good to love others. So it feels good when I give. When I give and people don't even know, or when I give and God is leading me to give and sow and do, it makes me feel good. It encourages me. And the goal is to, you know, get strong spiritually, mentally, physically. The goal is to get ready because this is a warfare. So whatever God is telling you to do, just know that there is something that the enemy is trying to come up with to break you or to keep you from doing that thing. So you got to be ready. You, you're inside. You got to be drinking water. You got to be drinking good tea. You got to be eating healthy foods. You got to know how to fast. You got to know how to journey. You can't expect to just get this whole big thing and get the enemy not try to tear you down or not try to put thoughts and not try. You got to be working on that thing. And one thing you can do is to sow into other people. Send somebody. You know, this girl, she um, didn't even know me. And I shared something in a group and she really, really appreciated it. It worked for her. And she got me a thank you card and wrote in the thank you card how much she appreciated me being bold enough to share the situation that I shared at the time. Do you know what that did for me? That really blessed me that somebody just said thank you for sharing. That blessed me and it did something inside of me to want to share more. It put something on the inside of me that made me want to to do more and she taught me a new skill when you do when someone does something for you say thank you get there at walmart there is a whole wall full of thank you cards buy some and if anybody blesses you in any type of way send a thank you card and just say thank you it's so it's so amazing to feel how you know to feel other people's energy when you're doing a good thing for them when you're loving on other people when you're giving don't just becoming a starter you're gonna have to know how to give and we'll talk about that another time but just sowing seeds and sowing into other good soil that you see is good ground that they're trying to start something as well be a part of that be a part of other people's blessings and it will bless you so then the next thing is to brainstorm. I did write a book and it's called True Princess. The, a lot of times people say, how did you write a book? How did you write a book and finish it? Well, to be honest with you, it took a lot of like prayer <laughs> and it took a lot of um, skill uh, and it took a lot of really discipline. I had to like discipline myself and 
actually I'm gonna put brainstorming and setting goals together because it took a lot of self-discipline I had to set goals by the end of this week I'll finish with the first two pages by the end of this week I'll you know, I had to set small goals and really hold myself accountable and have somebody. I had a pastor hold me accountable to it. I went to him and I said, hey, this is what I want to do. This is what I feel is burning on the inside of me. I can't shake it. I need to get it done. And he agreed to walk alongside me. And so he will hold me accountable too when he see me or he'll send me a message and say, hey, where you at? What you doing? So having that accountability ability really was a blessing for me. But writing down small goals and brainstorming. So get in your notebook, get your notebook out and writing down, just brainstorm it. Just freehand it. Writing down just like need $150,000. Need, I want a little girl. Uh, need extra supplies. Whatever it is, just start freehanding and set small goals. And you need to set the goals where they are able to be met so don't set too high goals just set little small goals that you can achieve within that week within that month within those couple months but not like over the years just just baby steps and start out small to set those goals so my next one is preparing and practicing so again i wanted to have my own school I wanted to have my own, I, I want to have my own school. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh, when I get the school, everything is going to be bliss and I'm going to know how to do what it is I'm wanting to do. It looks good in your head, but you need to practice. You need, say if you want to be a pastor, you should be practicing at home. You should be practicing in front of an audience. You don't want to just say I want to do this and then do it and then just throw yourself out there you want to get practice you want to prepare and get practice if you want to be a wife I'll tell you a story about being a wife because I wanted to be a wife and I wanted to be a mom just so bad um what I was led to do was prepare for that so I was living with my sister at the time and she had two little girls and what I would do is I would pretend like they were my kids I would pretend like her house was mine and when she would be at work, I would be cleaning, cooking, trying, doing, pretending, practicing. I mean, not like like extra pretending, but in my head, I'm like, I'm intentionally doing this so that I can get ready so I can know what to do when this is mine. So I can know how to handle this situation when I'm in it. So I can know how to, you know, effectively be a parent. Now, granted, I wasn't as much of a parent to them that I, I am to my own children, but I was preparing. I was trying to figure out how to cook certain things, trying to figure out how to do certain things because I'm thinking like when I become a wife, I don't want to just not know nothing. You know, I want to be able to hook them, fish line them and keep hooking them. You know, I don't want to just try to hook them at the beginning and then when I get a wife, be good for nothing. So I was practicing and doing those things and while I was so focused on practicing and doing those, then God sent my husband. And I wasn't out searching for my husband. I was home practicing and preparing. So sometimes you want to just practice and prepare. Stand in front of a mirror if you want to be a public speaker and talk in front of that mirror. Get that fake microphone. Get your videos out. Have your family be your audience. Have a, have a sermon that you preach to your family. However you need to practice cooking. I'm going to be a chef. Well, you need to be practicing. Don't just think you're going to go on to the greatest chef show and be a chef. You need to be practicing. You need to be trying. You need to be preparing. You need to be researching and looking up. And then I researched it and now I'm going to practice. Because don't expect people to just, don't expect yourself to just know what you're supposed to do when you get into the position. So practicing and preparing. And number 10, one day at a time. Take your journey one day at a time. I remember when God put something in my spirit to write a book, when he put in my spirit that you were going to write a book, I immediately start writing the book. Like I was like, I have never felt God so clear. God is so dope. God is popping. I'm about to write this book. 
here we go. I start writing. I start writing pages. I don't even know. But when I reread through that, I was like, this is trash. This is not. God, how you want me to do something for you in this garbage? Like, that, that ain't God and he don't move like that. He dropped something into your spirit that will lead you into a faith walk. So you are not necessarily, when he drops into your spirit, doesn't mean that you're about to do that thing tomorrow. So taking it day at a time. For my school, it's been amazing because I shared with God. I felt like God put in my spirit to have my own school a long time ago. And I have just been watching him strategically put me in positions and places. When I moved here to Washington, I became a director over a small church school for a daycare center. And I was in that position and not prepared, knew nothing, didn't have no training, just put into that position. And I just believe that God was allowing me to train and learn the business so that when I have my own, I'm prepared. I'm prepared and I could have said, no, you know, I don't want, that's not what I want. I want it to be like this. But the way that God does it is he strategically sets you up and prepares you before he gives you. So you have to be open and willing to accept what God is preparing you and sending you. You know, I tell my husband all the time, it's okay to start at the bottom. You don't want to just well, we do want, <laughs> but it doesn't usually happen where you just go into a job right at the top. Starting from the bottom is okay. It's okay because the things you need to know at the bottom, when you get to the top, you need to know how to manage the bottom. I learned that when I was a director that I needed to know how to be a teacher before I can direct because I needed to know what it felt like and I need to be able to connect with other teachers. How can I connect with someone where I've never been in that position? So it's okay if God is having you start at the bottom or start small or give you something small because he's training us and teaching us how to manage this thing so that when we are here, we know how it feels to be here. We can manage still this place and we can also support people that are in that place because it's not a bad thing to be in this place. Everybody has a place. Everybody has a part of the body. So when how God works is, you know, one day at a time, one day at a time. And don't get so caught up in your vision. Give it some time. Give it some time within a day. Practice and do what you're going to do. Give it, give it your 100% for maybe an hour a day. And then enjoy life. Don't get so, because you have to let God play his part too. God has to have a role in this as well. We, I'm not telling you how to be a starter just so that you can go off with God's vision and run by yourself. God is with you and he's going to help you get there. However, in the midst, you got to make sure your mind is right. Your body is right on the inside. You're pouring into yourself. You're sowing seeds. There's still things that you have to do before God is going to give you whatever it is that you're asking for. So taking it one day at a time and still spending time with your family, still working on, it's hard. You have, we have a lot of hats to wear. I have to be a wife, a mom, a friend, a daughter, a sister. Uh, I got to have the house clean. I got to have this. There's so many things and it just feels like it's overwhelming. And then on top of that, you have a big dream. Well, don't let your dream die and don't let your family die, but strategically sit down and think, okay, it's time for, there's a time for everything. Today, Saturday, I'm not going to deal with my dreams and my visions right now. I'm just going to spend time with my family and my wife and my husband. Okay, Sunday, I'm just going to, you know, take this day. It's my day. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to spend time with the Lord. So it should not be, okay, I'm excited. This dream, it's about to get all my time. It should not be that. It should be, okay. I'm strategic in my mind. This is where I'm at. In my mind, I'm preparing. 
in my mind, I'm thinking about, I'm accepting, I'm thinking about the things that God has given me, God has put into my spirit, I'm getting all that into my mind, okay, now I switch my hat, okay, now I'm a mom, I'm going to put that to the side for now, I'm a mom right now. Okay, right now I'm going to be at my husband's home. He could take the kids. I'm going to have some self-care time. So we need to be able to multitask and balance because you think about that too. Practicing even multitasking and balancing is amazing because when you do get that thing, when you do get up there, you'll be able to multitask, have a healthy family, have a healthy home, have a healthy relationship with God, and have your dreams and visions. And that's the goal. We don't want to just have the dream, the vision, and everything, and then losing over here, and losing over there, and your husband ready to leave, and your kids is acting crazy. We want to be able to manage all these compartments that God has given us and putting actually in our spirits to have the desire for. So with all that being said, I hope that you feel enough and ready to just get started. Just be a starter right now that's all we're doing right now is starting we're not just like oh i'm about to go out we're just starting getting it getting that vision in our mind accepting it getting that vision in our spirit pouring into ourselves sowing seeds promoting hope giving loving our family still managing the money that god has given us taking it one day at a time accepting job offers that God is putting in our path that may not seem like, okay, I really don't want this job. I want to be on top. But right now, that's where God needs you to be so you can learn a few things. Listen, be available and learn. Write it down. Buy your notebook. Be transparent with yourself. Write down the things that you know you may not want to share with other people. Write down. even It may feel or look silly, to you right now because God may have not given you all the pieces, but still write it down. When you're in the shower and God is pouring, write it down. How do you see yourself? What do you want for yourself? Write that thing down. Write it down. And then, you know, just we're just going to pray and believe God that he's going to do that for us. He's going to get us there. We just have to do our part. And that's just getting started. So I thank you so much for taking this time with me. I hope that you feel encouraged. I hope that you feel blessed. I hope that you feel ready. I hope that you feel excited about the things of the desires and the things of God. You know, these desires, like I said before, I don't believe that these desires are our own personal feelings. I believe that God has intentionally put in your heart because there are some things that I hear other people's visions and I'm like, girl, I could not do that. That is not in my heart to do, but I am here to support you. So, you know, in supporting others and loving others through their journey, and we all have a part to play in this world, and we all have, you know, a, a purpose. We all are a part of this body, and where do you fit? You know, maybe you're at the beginning of just thinking, okay, do I fit? Yes. Yes, you fit. As long as you are here on this earth, breathing, you fit, sis. You fit, bro. And then, then do I fit? Now, what do I want? What do I want? What am I believing God for? And let that take you. Let that drive you. You know, it could seem a little bit scary. And then if you have some fears, it could seem a little bit, you know, rough at the beginning. But once you make up in your mind that this is it for me and I'm following God and I'm going to go with the flow and I'm going to believe that one day I will have my school, go forth. Go forward. So I love you. Thank you for this time. Go forward. I'm hopeful for you. I am praying for you. If you need anything from me, Please feel free to message me, drop down in the comments, text me, call me, whatever it is that you need from me. I will do my best to keep supporting you. I will be sharing 
topics and ideas every Friday. So every Friday you'll hear something from me. I'll even be interviewing some people, some things that I don't have the grace to understand that somebody else may. I'll be bringing them in so that they can share and they can love on you as well. So please, 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 if you need anything, let me know. I love you and have a great day.